Hello, we're doing a little oil painting. I'm not actually sure if this is an oil. I think it's very possibly gouache, but I think on balance it's going to be oil. I haven't had it out of the frame. Louis, M Maria, Galia, everyone in Malta knows about them. Every dealer in England knows about them. They're a widely available, stable type of Maltese picture to collect. They're affordable, they're accessible, they're reliable. They're not priced stratospherically like a Shrans or a Preti or, or a Caravaggio. They, they are still affordable. He died, I think it was 1917, in memory. So they're not hugely old, but they're very emblematic of Malta. And if, wherever you're in the world, any Maltese, you miss your homeland, you just take a look at this thing, or one like it, and you, you know, you, you're back home. It, it, it's holy, really, I, I imagine for Maltese. I mean, I, I, find, I find looking at these, these, these pictures of Valletta by him, and, and of course, Esposito, Vincent Esposito did some similar, Vanella did some, Janus did them. There are lots of lots of picture, paint, picture painters did them, but this, this LM Gallia seems to be the one at the moment that the market likes, but I think because they are so beautiful and so widely available. And uh, it's not a form of currency really, but if you have to peg the market to one painting as a guide, I think this would be a, a good one to use. So what, he, what he's done here is, he, this is quite a small one. On, in, the, in the rate the spectrum of sizes of the Valettas, this is the smallest. Some of the big LM Galias are five times the size. But I must say, not just because it's what I'm selling, but this is a very, very carefully done one. Some of his, some of some of his, some of the Galia ones are very, very slightly rushed. Um, this one is really carefully done, and it has a lot of turquoise blue and a lot of pink. Which I personally really, really like. It's not necessarily a dusk or a sunset or a dawn. Uh, it's approaching that, but it, it's a daytime, a daytime scene, and it has this one. As I say, this really exuberant use of peachy, peachy pinks. You have the, the guard tower, the vedette, the guardiola. This round thing is a very curious small tease thing, where they dig in the virgin rock a circular pit which you can tie a ship to. It means they haven't got to go and buy or import a great piece of iron or timber. And these are widely found in Malta still. If you walk around the harbour in Malta, you will find these things, hundreds and hundreds of them all over the place. And that's what they are. So you have the round mooring point, the guard tower. This is Sant'Angelo looking at Singlia, and it is very similar now, Singlia. Uh, uh, th this is this is Angelo. This is Singlia. It's not exactly accurate, but it is that is what it depicts. You have um, lower baraka, you have upper baraka, you have the wharves and the warehouses, you have masks in the background, and on this occasion the background's full of uh, grey destroyers from the Royal Navy. You have Maltese boat, a Maltese boat. A, a Lutsu, I think it's called. So you have a, the very attractive sky, which shows open sky and size and scale. It's a big, it's a big sky. So, so it's come in a frame which is, I would guess, 1920 or 1910. I think that when the English tourist took it home to England, they had it framed in what was a modern frame. And I do quite like them in these frames. If a dealer is trying to stretch the value, the dealer will put it in a gold swept frame. They'll put it in a border. They'll st stretch it, and I and I think that's fine for for usage. It looks looks good. Looks clean. But uh, but as a dealer, I, I I do like them like this. This means it's come from a house somewhere quiet. It hasn't come from another dealer. It hasn't come from a workshop or a restorer's workshop. And this is what was happening with these pictures in England. That's how they were framed. Um, they're not, not, they're not cheap. They're, I say they're accessible. They are still not cheap. They are expensive. Many, many thousands of euros. But the, the, the good thing about these pictures is if you ever want to exit and sell them, there, there is a, quite a, a variety of ways of selling them. 
and they, they will sell because they are they are avidly collected and I know a lot of um, uh, notable Maltese uh, aficionados of paintings do like these Galias. Uh, even the ones who are accustomed to dealing in 18th century paintings and some of the religious paintings and museum grade paintings who handle those quality paintings, some of them, some of those persons, Maltese people, do quite like this artist. Uh, it's, it's a nice thing to look at, looking at a, a picture of a saint on a cross or Jesus car carrying a crucifix up a hill or a saint being tortured. You know, not something you want to spend too long looking at. Right, so I spoke to a Bonello yesterday from the family of Bonello painters and he gave me permission to quote him and say that these artists would make these, these paintings in chunks and batches. So Mr. Dahlia, I would assert, like Mr. Bonello, would take 20 or 30 at a time and do them in, in stages. Because when it, come, when it comes to painting, I think that if he was doing one at a time, he would be spending nearly as much time painting as preparing the colours and washing the brushes. So, so that's what happened. And that is an endearing thing, it's an honest thing. And just before we leave the subject of artists accelerating their painting habits, there, there are two things I'd just like to show you. This is one of them. This is called a camera lucida, which is a device which helps a painter copy another painting or copy a object and get the scale right. So C-A-M-E-R-A, -E camera, obviously. Lucida, L-U-C-I-D-A. It is a device which you can buy. You can buy old ones too. This is what the artists used to use when they were copying scenes and other paintings. That's what they used. Now, to the chagrin and disapproval of most dealers in London, I'll show you this one. This is another one. This is called Camera Obscura, O-B-S-C-U-R-A. Caravaggio and many of the artists in Europe used a polished glass lens to give them a starting point on their pictures. And this was proven by, uh, oh God, what was his name, an artist? A notable English artist who had the paintings by Caravaggio of Armour with mirror analysed scientifically. And uh, Hockney, that's who it was, David Hockney, did a, did a programme about it. And the, the reflection on the armour was done by, by this method. It could not have been done by the naked eye. So when you have Canaletto doing a Venice scene, when you have Caravaggio doing a church or armour, they're using this device to shine all, all bit upside down the image onto a a canvas and, and what they would do is they would very quickly put spots on the canvas or draw the object. The, the limitation is the sun moves and the, the picture moves as well. So you know if they were doing it in 1500 and 1800 there's no reason Mr Gallia can't have a method of accelerated painting in 1900 or 1920. So that's, that's just my comment of the day. Thanks for having a look.